Party people in the place to be. You are tuned in to the number one pop culture podcast on the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Zero Conditions Podcast. How we doing? How we feeling? My name is Excel Joab, a.k.a. The Real, and I'm back in the studio. Whoa, my mic wants to disgrace me. <laughs> and I'm back in the studio with the crew. My crew is not complete this week. Um... <laughs> My like Motolani is out in the UK. Um representing <laughs> representing Afrobeats out there. But more importantly, it's chilling with Madame. So oh, shout out <laughs> shout out to you. We don't know if you traveled for work or pleasure. We can't tell from the Instagram post you put. We can't tell. You know, but shout out to you. Shout out to the soft launch. You know. Oh, good the soft launch of Bay. I love it when niggas just soft launch. Yeah, yeah, I love just, a soft launch bam, You know, just take it. Without <laughs> explaining, just, oh, there's this random person in the slides. <laughs> that is not so random. Ah! And we have in the studio the incredible Melody Hassan. As always, it's my second week calling Melody incredible. Sick. And she's always looking at me straight when I call her incredible me? because she's me? always used to me incredible. insulting her. <laughs> And now that I'm not in source, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking the approach of peace. Aww. Taking the approach of love. Oh, so you know, cute. She, she can't handle it. Um, well, you know, whatever. Fuck you, Melody. Um, <laughs> yeah. And we have an amazing guest in the building. The one and only Kalo. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I want to point out that it's Kalo. But it's me. <laughs> exactly. I was just saying, it, what are you saying, Kalo? It's Kalo. You know the funny thing is? But it's a common... It's a common Thing yeah, 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 yeah. Because because I, I meet different people that tell. So for example, the people that first put me onto your music, mm-hmm. they probably called me Kalo. Was K? Ke- is Kalo? They called you. and yep. it's Dustin Trues. Mm-hmm. It's better. The, uh, the it's that good that they didn't say Kalu. Some no. people. Some well, people do say Kalu. Uh, yeah, yes, you do do. If you're Ipo. Yeah. <laughs> You say you do do be like that. You yeah. Carlo, Carlo. You do do like that. Wait, seriously, people have called you Carlos. Yeah, Cal- Carlos is also... Carlos. 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 Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, there's no R in the name. Oh it's like, where? God. But it does happen. Oh. You say, so, Kelo is the best of all of them. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you take yeah. Kelo over everything else. Yeah. But it's actually yeah. Kalo. Yeah. It's Kalo, yes. It's Kalo, Kalo. Yeah. Kalo. But yeah. Kalo, like of all the worst ways. To of go, all the worst ways, Kalo is, Kalo is the best. You know what? Place. I could even. It could be Kelo. It could I'm be. Kelo today. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That works. That works. That works. How you mm-hmm. doing? I'm good. Congrats on the release of your new album. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. What was it like during a uh, listening party in Lagos? Because that's your first. <laughs> <laughs> what was that like? Uh, well, I'd like to say shout out Jägermeister and Belea because whoo, <laughs> I, I I would like to think I remember some some of the events that wow. occurred. Um, wow. I want to say people were there. Wow. People attended. Wow. Knobs were turned. Wow. Bass was turned up. Mm. Yeah. And that's that's all I can so inform you so about. That night. Yeah. That's all I can let you know because that's all oh, you night. remember. I'm sure you were like partying hard, yeah. you know. <laughs> when you're part- yeah. I think that's when you're callow. When you're like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's when, the... when the hands are in the air. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Um, real quick, real quick. Um, a lot of people this week, Melody, have blocked me up and down. Oh. That in real life, for that for different reasons. One, there are people that blocked me in church after church on Sunday that about what? the top ten rappers listing that happened. That one is but they all f- <laughs> but they all followed up with um, emails. Like the way you people harass me and say I don't read the emails you guys send. Someone sent me a message saying that. When I check the emails, you're not as plenty. The emails are not as much as the accusations. I get. <laughs> so, want to wait till there's a mobile side? Yeah, let, let, let it, let it uh, match. Let's let it rack match. it up. But we'll, okay. we'll read some emails to, to, tonight. So, you know, no no fear. Calm down, everybody. We'll Calm get, down. We'll get you to that. Forgive us. Forgive and forget. Um, we were having such a fun time before we officially rolled the cameras. We're always doing that. We were having such a fun time. Um, Carlo, for someone who is making dance music, oh, I don't know why. As I said that, something came to mind, like something flashed. Okay, what? what I flashed? remember your Billboard 
uh, article inter- article interview yeah. where you said you will no longer like so the headline was what got my attention yeah uh, you said you will no longer be used as Prophet Full disclaimer: I did not write the headline, but they, you know they gotta get the clicks. Yeah, <laughs> the headline said, so but like, that was the summary. Carla says I will no longer be used as something for the DJs. Or as yeah, explain that situation. I didn't understand it. Um. Well, essentially, in that, da- uh, I don't know about local you, but in international dance music community. It's very much DJ first, vocalist second. So it even got to a point where I started actually resenting that term vocalist. Like mm. my PR people are like fully banned from using that term vocalist because it kind of like limits you down to, oh yeah, just there to put some vocals that they can replace you with anybody. But I think this is where they fucked around and this is where they find out. Wait, can, can you, you cuss can on curse this? Yes, you okay, you can cuss on this. Oh, well, sure. Fuck it, fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, Last. wonderful. So <laughs> <laughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way. Yeah, so it got to a point where um, my vocals are very distinct because, you know, you have my Nigerian accents, you have a little bit of New York in there. And then, you know, there's a little... I think the British is only in there because of the colonial influence. You know what Because they're like, oh my God, how long did you grow up in London? It's like, I've never... That's, that's never <laughs> happened before. I'm not British in any capacity. In any capacity or form. Exactly. So it's just type of thing where um, for me, they couldn't like replace me. Yeah. So I went like beyond being a vocalist, you know. Okay. So um, I learned the very hard way that um, in dance music, you are just the vocalist and you're just meant to be like kind of like in the background. Like, you know how Eurodance is, like, trending on TikTok right now? Yes, it is. And sometimes, even in the music videos, the person who sang the song is not even not, in the yeah. music video. Yeah. It's just yes. some, like, blonde hot girl, right? So that's, like, how dance music low-key is, where it's, like, you're just supposed to be, like, Prop. heard but not seen, which is the opposite, right? Yeah. And I learned that the very, very, very hard way. So, yeah. Eventually, I was like, oh, y'all just want to put me in the baby in the corner, I'm not. Uh, I, I I love attention, so oh. I can't be in the corner. It's literally impossible. I'm mad. Yeah, what? I mean, look at me. Hi. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> what drew you to dance music? Why dance music? Because y- you you were born and raised here. Yes. It's not like I mean, it's not like dance music is big here. I gotta explain. Yeah, I had bills to pay. I had bills to pay. You had bills to pay. I had bills to pay. So I love the original, the honesty. Yes. So what had happened was I had bills to pay, and also um, because I would like do these like I was making like alternative R and B, like alter R and B, fully like in that space. But then I would like have these breakdowns where maybe vocally I couldn't hit the notes. And I actually did start out originally as a rapper. Shout out Ikechuku because he was like my mentor back then. Ikechuku. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so um, he was like, because then I was like 15, 16, trying to rap like hard shit. I was like, glocks in your face. Ratatata. Ratatata. <laughs> and he was like, you, um, you 16. You, don't do that. You grew up in Lekki or whatever. Relax. Like, re- <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not about that life, chill. Um, so then I found my sound and it was more like talk rap. Mm-hmm. So I would like do that talk rap thing over like alternative R&B stuff. And then on SoundCloud, I started getting like message from all these DJs asking, oh, can you do this talk rap section over yeah. like a house beat? So it's not that I went out actively seeking it. It's just that it just, it fell on my lap. I see. That's the yeah. dance one out. And I just so happen to be amazing at it. <laughs> yeah, you do. Actually. <laughs> I don't mind. You do. You yeah. do. Um, and I find it very interesting because nine, so in the Nigerian music space, we one thing that's lacking is um, education. Like um, when I say mm-hmm. education, I'm, I'm specifically referring to history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because we've had people in the past from mm-hmm. the 60s, the 70s, that dabbled in... Yeah, you know, other genres. Electronic, yeah. dance music. Shout out William Oyebo. <laughs> He's literally the poster boy for, for that. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and 
So to see to see that. <laughs> <That's scary. laughs> shout out, shout out, shout out the cameraman. <laughs> so to see that, to see that we've gotten to a point now where you know popular. present day and there's someone like Carlo. Um, Grammy nominated. I, I, I think that this is like would be like a very good time for for we to, for us to like talk about like Kalo Kalo because I feel like both of us were very much aware of who she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like for the audience, maybe we should just give them like a quick rundown of Kalo as. Uh, an I don't artist. mind taking a back seat while y'all talk about that. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, you mean I have to say it? Yeah. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> you just remind me of a story that you just said something that that made me laugh. Like a story of like. A, uh, 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 a label exec that was giving me a Motola Nijis and it was like the artist they, they just dropped the projects so on the day of release like the night midnight mm-hmm. right the project is out the, that artist goes and tells the people on the team like hey the project is out we got here shout mm-hmm. out to everybody what a team what a great team mm-hmm. I'm just gonna take a back seat now oh. you know, let you all do your thing and they were like what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but shouldn't they do their thing? I mean, but the project just came out. That's even when, like, the battle, yeah, the battle when, just started. That's half the battle. <laughs> like, see, see, Carlo is out here. Look at me. I'm <laughs> out here. <laughs> She's out here at night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, fam. speaking about Carlo, she just dropped a body of work, Pain, Pleasure. Yeah. Yes, it's like a, it's, it's not like a, it's a dance album that I have listened to that I think you should listen to. She's a Nigerian born, but not living in Nigeria any longer. I live here, Loki. I live here, Loki. I just you live travel. here, Loki. When? She's a global citizen. That's yes, where I get my she... bar. That's where I get my money. <laughs> That's it? Where? That's in where the... I get my sh- money. In Nigeria? Outside of Outside Nigeria. Outside We're going to get to that conversation, <laughs> but yeah. She's a dope artist. And if you haven't listened to her body of work, um, Paying Pleasure, uh-huh. you should go check it out. She's, a, she's, she's, she's really dope. She used to be Nigerian, but no longer Nigerian. But she's a global citizen. She's a global citizen. Global. And she's, she's... Oh, you know, I'll take that. She's yeah, done a couple of things. You, you've worked with Selena Gomez. Um... You know, Grammy. It's like, girl, you popping. Yeah. She's really cool. I just love it. Can I take your home? <laughs> <laughs> so go check her out. Her name is Kalo. Yeah, just do like ASMR, like talk about me all night. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah, we can continue. First of all, that's something I don't understand. A- what? ASMR. I, like, it's nice. It's so soothing. I don't understand. It, What's that? Yeah. It's like when... You don't know ASM- ASMR. Like, no. I'm not going to tell you what it is. When you go home, I'll remind you tomorrow. Just go on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? ASMR video. Yeah, ASMR video. I I kid you not, you'll be calm in like. But melodies, seconds. melody, I feel like it's the kind of thing you would like. Uh-huh. Ah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is the you are yeah. Going to sleep right now. Yeah. Someone is like whispering. someone could set up a mic and just be making intricate like sounds. sounds. Like sounds. Oh, I, I think yeah. that'll be cool. Like, that'll be, be cool. Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> okay. Feel, I feel like that shit is crazy, but people love it. Like, yeah, people really, really love. I and, used to think it was trash. To sleep. Yeah, I used to think it was trash, and then I was like, oh, this kind of. It like, really calms the anxiety. I see. It does. Yeah, no. Oh, I wouldn't take her out actually. All right, let's get into early Kalo. Right, let's let me. Kalo. Ka- 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 <laughs> I'm in the war zone. It's okay, I'm but it's okay. I would say I'll be Kalo for him. I will be Kalo for extra. You be Kalo. Okay, cool. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. Yeah, because he's used to it, and I get it. Because literally, there are people who have known me for years who call me Kalo. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, and I'm one of those people. Yeah, forgive me, <laughs> forgive my sins. Um, let's start from like your music influences, right? Yes. Who mm-hmm. are the people that? Because those people still play a huge part, even though you sort of stumbled into dance. Oh from, yes, yes, yes. I stumbled into dance. That's very accurate. Yeah, you sort I of think. stumbled into dance. Um, but I'm sure that those influences will still they're yeah. still there they, they're still but that's the thing because I stumbled into it the influences are not really dance influences yeah. and I think that's what makes me unique in the space I agree because a lot of my influences as I said like when I said I was a rapper you yes. understand yeah I was in secondary school I was trying to be a rapper I thought it was hard you know what I'm saying so it was like tribesmen it was like um, Two Shots and Big Low. It was the Kechuko and Edo C. Like, I would like, like, never. I do you understand? Big, I could never predict that Two Shots and Big Low will come out of your nah, mouth. Nah, yo, but Two Shots is hard. That, that, that means she's rooted in this. She's, she's I was rooted like in, in there. Shape. Like, you know when Jimmy Jai used to do those um, jump, jump offs at Silver Bend? 
Like and he would like go and everybody yeah, would, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like hard. A new metro. Oh, I'm showing my age. Why oh you my god. Deli- yes, yes, yes. yes it has revealed why you're, why you're to the internet. Crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So people who have a foundation in hip hop or rap and even attempt attempted it. Yes. Whatever genres they end up in, yeah. delivery wise. It's always different. Yeah. Delivery wise. It's different. Yeah, because it's, it's like different. then you learn because obviously those people are inspired by like, you know, earlier because if we had to like really take it back, like really deep into my influences, influencers, yeah. I'll be influencers. No, no, your, your yeah. influences, my influ- influencers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Then it would be like Slick Rick, Far Side, um, uh, who else like uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony like wow. all yeah. that type of it would, no, I, yeah it would be like you'd be going like really no, deep now I like a toddler I'm so sorry that's, it's cool that's so, incredible I apologize it's so for you it's cool yeah so it's like I, I then the way that. they now like make it like home you know and like the cadence that they would now use yeah. is what then was programmed into did like, you like did you like Terry G no no offense, no offense to Terry G. No offense to Terry G. I, I apologize sincerely to Terry nah, G. Don't and like his the kind of people I would have, I would have predicted you would say. No, no, no. How? Why? How? How? I don't know why. Exactly. No. Like how someone just literally sat here and said, "Need to see, you know, my no, 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 no. She has called like, it now, but like if you had caught me on a day and, and said, "Try how? and guess who I," I don't know. My mind would have gone to. No, I wouldn't have actually. <sighs> to who else? That is shocking. Hey, yeah. come on, <laughs> come on, hold it, oh, hold yeah. up, hold but, up. But, but this, this, this actually explains a lot in terms of like um, your approach to dance music, the way you deliver yeah. your music. It explains a lot. Because yeah, it's not because the traditional. Do you understand? Approach, so yeah. it's just like it's way. that was the original like inspiration, and that's what I was doing. And then people are like, "Oh, this sounds unique." Because obviously, like, I'm not rapping in, like, oh, maybe full-on pigeon or whatever. And I'm not rapping. Like, I'm just using my regular cadence. Because I think that's why I like to use two shorts and, like, Ike Chuku. Or even M.I. Oh, fuck. I should have said M.I. Because M.I. is up there, too. And, like, when they came on. and like, Because I remember when I first heard Safe. Like, you know that first M.I. song? That Safe song. How he was it's just using. that song. Ah! It's always- I heard that song and I was just like, what is this? Like, what is this? What insanity? is this? I had to like, I think there's a Facebook message. I messaged, um, uh, who was it that produced that song? Let me check if I ever messaged Emma as a kid. I messaged Emma as a kid and I messaged, <laughs> oh. I think T.Y. Mix was the hot producer at the time. Yeah. And I was like, please, please work with me. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm 13. I don't, I don't have any clue. But please, I will do anything right oh. now. There's, there's something that I did not say when... The, she just said this thing. And yeah. I don't think I did not say when the Jazzy came here. Yeah. Oh, I said it now. No, I don't think you said I it. Think I didn't tell you. Off camera, I think. I used to text the Jazzy uh-huh. when I was in uni. Oh. Hi, Don Jazzy. Hi, Don Jazzy. It, <laughs> hi, my name is Melody. I know that someday... Hey. 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 And guess what you did though? I oh my god! god. <laughs> I just him that day because if he goes through his Twitter DM, he will see oh my god. The the be <laughs> and will be He used to reply me, oh, I, uh, hope, I hope I see you at the front. But then hey. he probably appreciated it at the time, you know. Because yeah, 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 yeah. going back to those messages, my grandma was so horrible. Oh no. And, I, and I'm telling him, one, I tell him like random, random shit like, Don Jazzy, too deep. Somebody did this. And I'm so shy. Yeah, that was me whisking yeah, on Twitter. I was like, are you, I had a bad day at school today. Yeah, like, are you? <laughs> are you yeah, yeah, yeah I was telling my uh, yeah, because that was like, that was like my boo at that time. <laughs> he used to reply. <laughs> yeah, and he used to reply. Like, he was like, oh, hope you had a good day today. I'm like, now that you replied me, it's I feel so better. Much better. Oh my God. I I'm had that dying. face too. I had that face too. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Back to the influences. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like it was so fascinating to me. And me in my little like 12, 13 year old like era phase. Because I could also sing, you know, I could sing really well. Hmm. But then like, I was just like, ah, there are some things that you can't exp- express melody. Like you have to like split a heart like 16 or something. 16 bars. Do it. You know what I'm saying? 16 bars, you know, give them some shit. <laughs> so I'll now stand outside New Metro, DJ Jimmy Jack is out there. And I'm like, I have this, CD. I bought the CD. I put my little demos on it, and then like I, because there were like young people doing it too. There was like Bonafide Crew, yeah, and like all them. So like 
it was like it was like amazing it was so like inspiring that like because before that and before like even tribesmen came on and they were doing mm -hmm. their own stuff like mm -hmm. there wasn't really i don't know this is my own little bubble of opinion there wasn't really a rap scene you know so like they now came and the way they were now like because think about sasha on that um oh yeah song her verse yeah. how she comes on and yeah. she's spinning bars like eve and it's just like damn you know like it was like amazing to me at the yeah. time so like being able to so even how house i won't say found me was honestly because then i went to the studio with riton who i used to work with at the time and he was like oh you should do stuff over this type of a beat and i was yeah. like i don't know what to do on this type of a song, it doesn't really fit what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And he was like, oh, um, because I was used to this stuff they would play on like MTV Bass, MTV yeah. Africa and all that. And I remember they used to play this lady, hear me tonight. Like, and I was like, all, all the songs I know, Sha, they repeat. Like, yeah. you know, and then just till I can get my satisfaction. It's always yeah. like a repeating yeah. looping. It doesn't, there's no verse, chorus, hook, pre, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, it just sounds like a repeating thing. And he was just like, yeah, just write something that repeats. And that's why I wrote in my notes. And I, then I wrote Rinse and Repeat based off of like December in Lagos and what that feels like. And I went home that day and I decided I'm moving to Lagos because I was like, this song is not, it's not going anywhere. It's not going to pop so here. Convinced. I was so convinced the song was not going to do anything. Because yeah. even in house, like, at the time, it was when, like, all those, like, ding, 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 ding. it was, yeah. like, that was ding, ding, what house ding, ding, ding. was at the yeah. time. Yeah. And if you listen to Rinse and Repeat, it's a very stripped back, laid back song. And I was just like, this song ain't going to do nothing. I moved back to Lagos. I made up my mind that week. And then I moved. And then two months after I moved is when the song started taking off in, like, Europe and all that. And then, boom, my life changed and I'm here. So, so your life changed when you came back to Lagos and you decided to leave Lagos? I moved wow. today. I was here. How long? From I was here Switched until I wow. had a job. I was working at all these Yabakon Valley um, offices, and then as th what? I was doing marketing, digital marketing. Okay, okay. And then um, they used to even deliver my plaques and all my certificates to my office. Me and my coworkers would open it together. Mm -hmm. Shout Ooh. out the team. <laughs> but then I wanted to go to the Grammys and they wouldn't let me go. They were like, oh, you've been flying too much. You said you would only fly once in a while. And then remote work was still very shun. You know how now everybody is yeah. like yeah, working yeah. remote. But then I, this was 2015. I was working remote. And they were like, nah. And I was like, okay, I got to go. Bye. <laughs> Toodles. Bye. Yes, you I, I got to go to the Grammys. <laughs> Whoopsie. Whoopsie. <laughs> but so as, are you doing this? Like, are you doing like your music scene as an indie artist or you're signed to your record label? Um, so I had so that's another thing with dance. Like a lot of dance artists don't like sign themselves. They sign their singles. So I had singles signed to labels. Yeah. Yeah. But like for the body of work, the pain pleasure one is Oh. But, so but so I but, myself right now I'm signed to Epic Records. So you're not an indie artist? No. You're not an indie artist. I'm signed to a major label Sony. that controls because Sony the conglomerate. <laughs> but how is owns that? Me and <laughs> yeah, all that my, owns me. And everything I say. They say and everything I yeah. say. But how has that been? Because for a couple of days and weeks now in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, record labels have not been getting uh, good. Yeah. Not been getting good. Uh, tough. It's been, it's been tough for the re mm. record label owners mm -hmm. getting dragged mm -hmm. left, right, center. You know, I'm sure they're having headaches. Yeah. You know, like it, not a, not a lot, but some artists yeah. have been coming and talk about their experiences. Record yeah. label owners saying. They took this, they took my splits, they're not allowing me to grow. Some people are saying that, you know, record label owners be telling radio stations not to play their songs when they leave. Yeah. I won't lie. And also, that's one of the, even one of the reasons why I left Nige. Because I, I, I formally, like, left in 2018. I moved back to New York. But then it was because, like, at the time, I would talk to people about record label situations and owning their rights and publishing and mechanical royalties. And no one knew what I was talking about. People would sign. Because, I mean, I get it. You're excited. Someone offers you, like... Because here, yeah, did I would say there's a system or not really. Is a, is a dis, dysfunctional function that occurs in the music industry in Nige. 
in that they will offer you a flat because some of these people they are bringing you from like maybe just if you're a rapper they are bringing you from like just Kaduna like the north because they have a, an amazing hip hop scene over there then they set you up in apartments they settle all your transports all that yada 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 and then when you blow they pay for your flights they do everything so they'll not essentially expect you to like sign your life away which to be honest I was going to sign a Nigerian deal before oh. um, my own like proper deal kicked in um, and they expect you to is is a very like they expect you to sign a lot away, which I'm coming from a point of privilege here because you know I have something or I had something, but some people don't have anything. All they have is music. Yeah, you know. And if somebody is giving you this deal and they're offering to pay for your rent for a year and they're giving you management and they're giving you all these things, to you it sounds appealing and you're just like, where do I sign? Hmm. Sometimes you don't even have a lawyer present. Show me the dotted line. Exactly. Where do I? What do you mean? You sign three pages, and I get this. Okay, and they sign it. You know, and they don't take the time to like, because that's actually something I really is literally on my gold list to um, like set up like education for like the arts because people think oh okay because these people have offered these basic necessities which to be honest if you look at the grand scale of things they are basic necessities. But in the real, like, think about it. If you have a long, successful career, that's below basic. That's like nothing, you know. But lots of people are thinking of the right now. Maybe they're thinking max, maybe two years from now, two, three years from now. Ah, I'm getting 3M for a show. Do you get? So it's just kind of like, I want to really set up like IP education and like, because people, honestly, a lot of people in night don't know that. Like, even for me, self to prevent them from finessing me, I had to take like music courses from Coursera and wow. all that type of stuff to make sure like I was protected. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, they, they really tried. But then I was like, ah, 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 I got the book. Don't you dare. I got the book. <laughs> he said he really and there's said. one quote I remember. I don't remember much from the class. I cannot tell you much from the class. Yeah. But what I do know is every time your song gets played, someone is getting paid. That's one thing they kept repeating through the course. And it's like, it's very, 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 very key because a lot of people don't even realize. They're like, oh my God, they're playing my song in this. But it's just like, who who, who took that money? Mm. Who Someone took that money. And it's not you. You get the clout for it. But who got paid? Who took that check? Yeah. But sometimes they argue that the clout brings the money. So it's like, okay, I'm, am I might not bother Well, it about does, that? but it's just like, because someone, for someone like me, I'm not the most popular artist in the world. But I know at like 60, I will still be making money from my music, right? Mm. Because I have a lot of like things put in place where a lot of my royalties will eventually like revert to me and stuff like that. So I will be good for like, I could decide to not work for a while. Wow. You know? I mean, I'm, I'm not saying the, the money is not that much too, but if I was living a minimal lifestyle, it will sustain me is what I'm saying but like a lot of and I think that's what really really hurts me because even back to what I was saying about my influences a lot of these people like if you don't have a hit one Christmas and you're not booked at corporate Christmas parties and all that every every single Christmas you don't you don't have much because there's not really a royalty set up here you know and they just expect you to just be grateful with scraps I've received one check with Nigeria on the check and I made 18 cents from that check that had Nigeria on it. Wait, wait, how? Royalties. 18 cents. This is royalties, I'm assuming. Yes, 18 cents. And from what I know, my song has been the theme song from some, for some radio ads. You know, they play my songs on some radio. Where the money going? Who can pay for that? <laughs> wait. wait. <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah. suspicious eyes. Like, you know I mean? Who can pay for that? <laughs> why would anybody send you 18 cents? Is there even that's why you know the writers are doing like a writer's strike right now because yeah, the real thing they would send you a check for 18 cents. The nah. stamp costs more than the check you're receiving because the stamp yeah. is like 50 cents yeah. or like 25. Do you cents. think you survive as an artist living in Nigeria and doing music actively in Nigeria? Like if I was signed to a Nigerian label. And just living here. It depends. You know, a label I think that has amazing structure here. Maven has amazing structure here. Maven is like, if I had to sign to a Nigerian label, it would be Maven all the way. Um, But like, I know 
Like even think about the Kiss Daniel situation now that they even had the rights to his name and he had to put two Z's. Mm. Yeah. Do you get to so now making his name Kiss? In name in Kiss Daniel. Why is <laughs> that? Is. Why is gonna who wanna kiss Daniel? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Do you get but like so, that education is not there. <laughs> the one. Typically. Oh, I'm I'm talking <laughs> shit today. Hope I don't oh get cancelled. Oh my god. <laughs> but um I mean this is this is this is so interesting to see that you have this much um Education. Yeah, don't even. Just, I had to take costs. I had to protect not even myself. Just education. Even Cause like, if you think if you think Nigerians are crazy, white people are worst. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, not even just education. Like even going back to your influences. Um, I want to, I want to go back there for a minute because, um, I think that because of how much hip hop has evolved now, mm-hmm. I think you can. I don't know if you'd be open to it, but that would be fun to see mm-hmm. you still try and touch the the hip hop thing again. Yeah. I think that would be fun to see. Like I could easily hear and when you mentioned it and you started mentioning your influence, my brain went my my brain went haywire. Like Would you I, go to? my mind went to um Doja Cat's paint the town red. You could easily mm. pull that off. I could. You know, you easily pull that off. With, with all, without all the devilish things <laughs> around it, you could pull without off. The you could pull off the music without all that theatrics. No, opus, opus is like, yeah, <laughs> we don't do devils. We don't. Not all that drama with opus the devilish the tale. Back. Oh my god! Like, yeah, because I, I love Doja, but she's tripping right now. Very creepy. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I have thought about it. Like, I would love to collab with a lot of like Nigerian hip because I feel like there's a little resurgence happening yeah, right yes, now. Uh, hip hop is. Yeah, like I love Odumoju. Shout out Odi. Yeah. I don't know. Is Charlie Poppy hip hop? Is he hip hop? Yeah, she-pop. I mean, she-pop. there are, are hip hop yeah. influ- you know, influences. The yeah. thing is that for Afrobeast as a genre, has hip hop as one of his major foundations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you will always catch it here yeah. and there. He's a hip hop yeah. artist, so yeah, Charlie Poppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, like, because honestly, and I really hate that, um, you know, I want to say, I like to call it Batik Bati kind of overshadowed the because there are lots of like rappers here What's Bati Bati? like you know, basically no. Bedu, <laughs> Bedu, Bedu overshadowed hip hop yeah, okay, okay. like, like, like even someone like even black bones black bones is an amazing rapper yes, yes. you know but you know he gotta do the things he gotta do and he's a marketing genius also he knows yeah. what he gotta do yeah, i think and he's people, doing the things he people, gotta do people now underestimate how much of a great rapper black bones is and how hard he is black bones was a battle rap like yeah, he came yeah, from the yeah. battle rap on the ground. Like, yeah. bro, that's Actually. as hard as it gets. <laughs> exactly. And I'm not saying like, ah, if they tell me to speed 16 on radio, I cannot do it too. Me, I'm one of those who in the corner, I write my bars and I'm like, all right, I'm ready like 45 minutes later. Let's oh, go. But I'm ready <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, but it's going to be hard. I'm going to mark you, but it's going to take me 45 minutes to yeah. write it out. You know, I have to write it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just the type of thing where I'm really sad it kind of died, you know, because I wouldn't say it died. Yeah. I would say I would say two Is things happened. What happened? One was agenda. Yeah. Um ra- uh, that that purest form of hip hop was no mm-hmm. longer the agenda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um Afrobeat started popping off. White money came into the scene. Uh, and when I say white money, I'm not referring to Big no, Brother Niger. Big Brother Niger guy. <laughs> white people's money came into the scene and they put yeah. a lot of money behind Afrobeat. So yeah. what happened was that the rappers who had range enough mm-hmm. to do to infuse rap into Afrobeat mm-hmm. survived. You know, so yeah. Alamide survived, Fino survived, MI survived, yeah. um, Iobli survived. The rappers who could do that, they survived. Mm-hmm. And what even it was even much better when the rappers who could do that could also put in like do it in the local dialect. Yeah, yeah. I make it more relatable. It was a winner. Fair yeah. enough. It was yeah. a winner. Yeah. So yeah. that that's 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 one. And even the second thing is that culture is aggressive, man. Culture is like COVID. You know mm. how COVID kept mutating. That's what culture, and music is like that. So yep. so it keeps so hip hop had to go through that here in Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for us to find because the original even around the world the, the OG form of hip hop 
that we were doing was not originally our style. Yeah, true, yeah. fair we enough. That. Fair so we enough. had to get to that point where we sort of yeah, like, find our own style too. House. You know, see in South yeah. Africa, and my piano happened, mm-hmm. and their uh, rap took a backseat. That's actually, I never thought, ab- thought like, about it, it from that angle. Big backseat because all the money mm-hmm. from the labels and the distributors. You go into Ama Piano. You money into Ama Piano. So it's yeah. like, do you want to do Ama Piano or not? <laughs> do you want to do, yeah. do, do this and or not? Rappers who could. I remember one of the first Ama Piano records I heard was. I think Melody played it on radio. Play Plenty Landing. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one was huge. Casper Invest. Yes. But even uh, when he played it, it wasn't that huge. It wasn't that huge at the time. The time he played it, wasn't that huge. Yeah. Interesting. But I was like, Casper is on this? Why? You know, I'm, I'm a few <laughs> no, months later. Unbeknownst. <laughs> yeah, a few months later, I, I got it. So, guys, we're about to go on a break. Um, <laughs> the conversation continues. You can catch the full episode on Monday video on youtube audio on all streaming platforms thank you for watching live if you're watching live we'll be back after the break the conversation continues so if you miss anything monday go re-up yeah re-up so um that's literally what i feel like happened to the hip-hop scene the hip-hop scene and it's not like nigga like show them come do palm wine and they still bar up on it yeah you know it's just that I'm not saying it died, died, but remember there was a time when it was like the main. It, it was, was like hip hop and then was, everything else. Hip hop was mainstream. Yeah. Like, yes. Whiskeys and Davidos wanted to be with the rappers. They were yeah. hanging out with rappers. They were yep. the only pop guys that were big at the time were the, the band them. Yeah, the band and yeah, and yeah. Face and whatnot, you know. But they wanted to be with. Be square. Yeah. They mm-hmm. wanted to be with, and even everybody at the time, even the Dibanjis the them. The they, the they, 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 they embrace the that cultural side of it, uh-huh. like the, braga, the, 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 the braggadocious nature. Yes, yep. they flashy, brought that, flashy. They now brought that into yep. you know into yep. Afrobeat. You know, uh-huh. they were doing like 40, 50 bottles in the club. Oh you my know, the funny God. thing about <laughs> the bling bling culture is it's so crazy is that this whole thing about artists going to the club here or here in Nigeria uh-huh. and doing like twenty bottles, thirty bottles that you see David do. do. The people mm-hmm. who really started it. Was was Don Jazzy and the bunch? Oh, in Nigeria. In Nigeria, like, and I've heard this from a lot of people who were around at the time. They, I've heard about like a particular day where, um, shout out Soskid, where Soskid, <laughs> Soskid was on Twitter. And Soskid was like, they be telling me Don Jazzy and Divine, they do like 20, 30 bottles in the club. That's that's cap. That's a lie. <laughs> I don't believe y'all. And they were like, okay, come, come through, come see how we're living. Uh, and, you know, and he went to the club and they were like, so it was not like um, Soski was like a news anchor that night. On oh, Twitter. wow. You were like, back. tweeting they live. They did 10 bottles. Shit. They don't did 20 <laughs> bottles. Shit. They <laughs> that was actually hilarious. But that, that does make sense. Yeah. yeah, it does. One thing I love about Don Jazzy, um, I mean, business side, business aside, He's like a marketing genius, honestly, and he knows the things that will grab people's attention, yeah. and he's Did like see, yeah. so good at that. Yeah, he's like goated fully, honestly. I remember when, when Don Jazzy was going to the club in pajamas. There was a whole yep. phase. I remember his walking stick phase. Yeah, the Wait, people thought Don, Don Jazzy couldn't pajamas. even talk. Yeah, I'm Bro. Fully yeah. In pajamas. Remember when he would always whisper? Yes, everything. he would whisper in Don Jazzy. I mean, the <laughs> band, yeah. yeah, like yeah. That, that pajamas era was ridiculous. Was. Was like, yeah, he was. he has his. I I think he's back in the pajamas era. He just talking now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. Um, you, you guys see the? There's no. That's a stupid question. You guys have have seen the whole. Um, drama, like how it has evolved. The what now? More bad. Yeah. Situation. Have you been able to? I don't even think you can avoid it. I feel like it's something that's yeah. Is, is there in your face? Yeah, it's, um, it's definitely out there. You know, I think that one of the things that um gave me a headache mm-hmm. this mm. week was how I feel like different people were trying to use the 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 chaos because the chaotic situation. You know, it's the whole death and the stories around it. Everything is still allegedly at this point. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. Until the police come and tells us what the official statement or the official story is. We know an autopsy is being done. Yeah. The Nigerian police has announced that they've concluded the autopsy. They announced that last night on mm-hmm. Twitter and that they will put out the results soon. Mm-hmm. What I find interesting is how, like, 
different people have tried to come up come and like capitalize on the situation and just using the thing to cloud chase another thing i also found interesting is how it's now like people are expected to always grieve publicly Mm. like if you did not yeah celebrity and you did not come and post yeah about it you don't care and i'm like when did when did we get here like oh we've been there a long time (laughs) how do you police grieving yeah okay so maybe i should just start from like k carlo Mm -hmm. what do you think about sharing on social media grieving (sighs) well posting so um i'll i'll definitely say this um so my dad passed in december wow right and this was like right as i was wrapping up the album and everything so i was kind of like left with two choices like you can use your dad's death to sell albums which i used to be in marketing it would work you know or you can deal with it but it's just like they were there was so much to deal with like I hardly talked about it even on so if I met I didn't even post him. Did you post it like on your page? No. I posted on my story, you know, and I think I tweeted once about it. But it's just like and I think this is also something that has come with age, because I know for a fact like ten years ago I would have been like all over, uh posting every single day, yada yada yada. But like people grieve different and I think that's something I've really learned with age, Mm. you know, because a lot of it, I think, is also like selective outrage in that, okay, someone who maybe was like Mobad's closest friend, they're dealing with a lot of shit. Like, why would they, why why would their first instinct be to be like, oh, my friend has died, I'm going to post like 10 stories about it. Like, some people don't want to do that because maybe to them internalize this like, even disrespect you know and then so then attack them to be like oh why why didn't you post this person blah 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 like that's not how everybody deals with stuff you know yeah yeah guys welcome back from the break if you missed anything we talked about which was interesting by the way if you missed any of what we just said the last (laughs) seconds you need to go check it out the full the full episode drops on monday on youtube and on streaming platforms. See you on Monday. So, so I understand the conversation that Kalo, I understand her position on people grieving differently and also like you mentioning the, in quotes, performative expectation of yeah. you know coming on social media to do certain things. But don't you think that it is understandable if people would expect that if you were close to someone and you mm-hmm. lost the person or if you're going through something or someone you, you're close to they would expect that because social media is how people your fans don't see you your fans don't know what you're dealing with in your house yeah your fans don't know what you do on a daily your fans don't know if you're sad about something the only way that they can see or mm-hmm. the only way they can get an idea of what you're doing is on social media so it feels like okay if you're not anything on social media they, they don't have any they don't have any other way to tell what is going on with you know a fave or something i hear i I hear i hear that argument and i think it holds some water not 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 a full cup okay (laughs) (laughs) some water (laughs) a couple of drops Uh not not drops (laughs) but i think that like this is this is in this particular situation. Not, this is not about this situation, just generally speaking. No, so uh, generally speaking, you hold uh, the cup is full. Yes, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah, that cup is full. Yeah, generally, mm. speaking. generally speaking. But in this... in certain situations, like um, someone died, um, maybe your favorite singer is pregnant, or maybe mm-hmm. she just gave birth. Or maybe she's just taking time to be with family. Or it could be anything, anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like people, one, people should remember that people in question are human beings. Two, I'm also beginning to realize how much power th- these phones have over our lives. Mm. That we've forgotten that we can just be people without the phones. Like, it's not everything you go through that you're supposed to. I wouldn't even say that you're supposed to. Right, I'm, I feel like there should be balance in everything, and the whole 
point the whole thing of like people bringing every single thing to social media i think it's crazy i think it's an extreme mm. and we we finding that balance is hard for us it's tough for us and it yeah. even makes me worry um about the next generation like you know if you if you're with if you're with kids now let's say three to seven year old kids if you're in that situation mm -hmm. and you scroll on instagram or tiktok and you hear all those popular sounds they know it yeah and they start dancing to it yeah which is wild yeah <laughs> which is very wild I, I, I agree with you 100 even aside from like sh you know sharing certain things on social media i even worry about sensory overload yeah. yeah i think that we live in a generation where there's like there's so many things mm -hmm. for people to keep up with there are so many social media apps that you need to you know stay in touch yeah. with people on it's just too much and the worst yeah. part is now like how the the the, the apps the algorithms yeah are smart they're very smart Ooh. now so yeah. they know how to get you so i feel like one of the greatest things that human beings created was figuring out advertising <laughs> advertising <laughs> one of the greatest things that man came up with yeah mm -hmm. because we figured out people's pressure points and what's or, the, what's or what to apply pressure what people, on and, and, and what or what people are or what people are slaves to mm -hmm. right and we weaponize Emotion it and we weaponize it so in the, it, in the mm -hmm. 70s and 80s it was sex mm -hmm. right so it was like it was sex but you see, the thing is that it's brilliant just here it was sex right but it's, it's not like it's not like <laughs> buy this car you attract the chicks yeah the chicks will look at you sexy you mm -hmm. know but um wear these jeans all the boys will go crazy about you mm -hmm. no i mean yeah. it's always been that way though because that's effective that's effective marketing it, see it hit its peak when the 70s and 80s so oh are you, yeah okay so are you are you, are you, are you are you guys saying now that the way people the power that sex had as a tool back yeah. then it doesn't have that power now i mean it does oh, now but the real does. thing now is yeah. not even sex anymore it's what it's rage it's oh, rage. Yeah, it's outrage. anger. It's outrage. So yeah, the algorithm, like the algorithm, now knows the kind of content you are drawn to. That will the, make you the upset. The ones that the ones that make you happy, the ones that make you upset. So let's say you are a raging misogynist. Ra you know the Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. I was about to mention. You know, and you're like, um, and you just and you see a video of, uh. For example, let's say a rich ce a celebrity, um, his wife cheated on him and she's divorcing him and she's taking mm -hmm. half his wealth. Mm -hmm. ah! 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 You, know, you know what I hate the most? Because um, Twitter now is like, there's the for you and there's your regular timeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes I open Which up my phone. Use? That's the default is it for you. The default is for you and it's intentional. So sometimes I go on there and I'm like, why am I seeing all these things that, that are attacking but, this one person? That's this my is favorite not, part this of can't Twitter. can't possibly yeah. be why but, what my whole timeline is talking about. Is that that's my favorite part of Twitter. I'm never unfollowing. Oh wow! <laughs> never. So, the, but now the algorithm. No, but then it shows people rage. who you don't even follow. Yes, that's what I don't want to see. What anyway? I don't want to see what I'm following because I feel like on the on the for you part, I'm out. It's. The reason I prefer to be on that for you part is I'm not aware of what's going on in my immediate surrounding. So, yeah, so you don't want to be aware outside. of what's happening. I don't happening. want to know. I don't <laughs> want to know what yeah, I'm interested saying. in what's happening outside. Do you understand? Because I don't want to know what people around me are saying. Like, keep that to yours. I'm never there. <sighs> so I'm always like getting information. Like now, for, for example, I know when I knew when people started getting upset about Remy Ma and Papu. But then it's showing you information it thinks you want to know based on the things you engage with yes, already. Actually. So it's yes. just like, how do you know the gen like how can you be objective if yeah, it's not even you. showing you what is actually happening? It's just showing you what mm, based on your likes and your preferences, yeah, we'll it seems you like this. you would take distance. So yeah. here you go. Yeah, I, I yeah, but I, I, I and I don't like Instagram's what they call it. Algorithm. No, the what that what's that page? Explore page. Explore uh, page. I don't think it, it got it, Okay, I like it because it. it has very nice recipes for yeah. cookies. I mean because because you like because you like that kind of So yeah. for example now, <laughs> I right? Like it. For example now, right? Before before I before I got before man's got into a relationship, oh man's been checking out the, the girl them, right? Oh no. But like the girl them I'm checking out. It's not the girl them you are you, showing me on you know, you know you know what you're gonna do now you know what you you know what you're gonna do you know what you're gonna do you're gonna 
press those three dots at the top, you're going to tap that. You're going to say, not interested. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you're going to get recipes for cookies. Oh, you understand? You know, you like, get, you know, very, recipes for cookies. For cookies. <laughs> very <Yeah>. easy. Exactly. <laughs> I'm already the girl them sugar. I don't mean no. <laughs> <laughs> Except I can't. I can't be serious. Yes, I, I like tall, slim mm. girls. That's my mm-hmm. spec. Mo- uh, Melody, okay. they are not my spec. I wasn't even. Are you on? You, don't I thought do that. You're to touch your don't hair, do Like, nah, nah, dog. Whatever. I'm like <laughs> Timberland. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that. Like, you know, but the explorer people been showing, showing me girls with big boobs, big ass. I'm like, you, then you, you just stop me. not interested. Why are you showing this that to me? It's the beautiful slash sad thing about the internet because you can literally create your own bubble. Yeah, you can. Right? You, can. you just say not interested and then things you like, just double tap I mean, that. I like that with, with reels though. You know, once in a while on Instagram reels to yeah. show you, do you like this kind of content? You, yeah. you ask that question. Oh, yes. yeah, they do push and reels that. is on point because me, I like that. So my reels content is music stuff, mm-hmm. dogs. Dogs. Dogs, I okay. love dogs. Babies playing, you know, children doing silly things. Okay. Yeah, that's literally that's it. That's my real content. Re- really, and yeah. then you explore pages, boobs. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. No, not anymore. This was then. Now this was. How then. you get from dogs and this cute was, babies this, this to was, boobs? This was then when I was checking when I when okay, I was then, okay. on the on the block. All right. On the All right. street. Okay. What's, what's why why pain pleasure? Well, so what had happened was some people tried to finesse me in the music industry and that made me very upset. Yes. Um, so that is very evident also in my Funz music video, which is available on YouTube. <laughs> Go check it out. Go check it out. Okay. Um, so I was very, very angry for a long time and hmm. shout out my therapist. She advised me to write about it. So the first, I want to say five songs... Uh, about violence and I hate you and I hope you die. Uh-uh. And then the last half is about having fun. No, no, but <laughs> on your body of work. Yeah. So, so if you say like the fire, <laughs> is the way she said that having fun. You sounded like like someone from like all those adults on Sesame Street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but having fun. <laughs> the song, the the it's girl. You know, you're not trying to kill anybody there. It girl is funny. That's, I'm actually very happy you asked me this question because It Girl originally was a very dark song. So what had happened was um, when I this was like one of the last songs I wrote in my apartment in New York. Okay. And my apartment used to like overlook Manhattan skyline. Mad. And I wrote it on a Friday night. And usually a lot of the events like because I'm used to like industry events there. Like I don't go to a lot of industry events here. Here Why? I What's the difference? Just, What's the difference between industry event here and industry event there? It starts on time. It starts on time. Oh, that's that's all I'm gonna say. Shots about that. were not fired. <laughs> facts are just facts. Yeah. Facts are just facts. Yeah. yeah. It will say seven to two is seven to two. If you are there past two, they kick you out. <laughs> yeah. So, so you were saying someone was trying to finesse you in the industry. Yes. Yeah, so it girl is like. So I'm used to going to all these like fashion parties where it's like all these models. And the crazy thing about all these models who are like the it girls, they're always so sad. Like they're beautiful. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. But then you go to the bathroom or like you see them in the corner. They're so sad, you know, because they don't know who their real friends are, but they're very gorgeous and everybody wants to be their friend. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, every guy wants to sleep with them. It's great. But like... And I think that's why even the song goes like she's the it girl. She can't control it. Because it's not her fault. She was born gorgeous. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, I think that's like the dark side of pretty privilege that people don't talk about. You know? You know, you know, like the line you just dropped now, I was literally just about to say that. Because every time people talk about pretty privilege, yeah. they never talk about the other side. Yeah, there's the other side because you don't know who's only gotta, trying to be your friend. Pr- there is a dark there side to pretty very privilege. Dark side As of we pretty both privilege. can you. <laughs> I stand with you. I stand with you, girl. Oh my god! Right? I right now. <laughs> like, why would anyone think there is no dark side to pretty privilege? There's a dark side to pretty privilege. Let's dig, let's dig more into this. This dark oh, side yeah. of pretty privilege. Yes, yeah. we are more than happy to answer let's start your with you. questions. Yeah, Melody, first, oh, first, oh, first, oh, first round. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> ding ding ding. <laughs> let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. Let's not do this. But to be very honest, I feel like. It is um, very dishonest for people to talk about pretty privilege and not talk about the dark side. Yeah. Because 
first things first, people just assume that you're dumb. Yeah. First things first, yeah. people just think that you're dumb. And once and you, yeah. That's one. Then mm-hmm. secondly, when you're excelling in things, you're like, maybe you're killing your job, you're killing your career, you're getting all these things. People always just assume first. As maybe a you slept girl, with someone Maybe you to slept get with that. someone to get the job. Uh-huh. Then yeah. also, when you now, maybe you get a job, you have the capacity to do, to do the job. Mm-hmm. People now think that because you're doing the job, People want to approach you on, oh, let's fucking have sex, or let's fuck you, let's just, let's, just, let's just have sex. People are literally just chasing you in a way that other people can just regularly just do their job and wake up in the morning and just go about their job. But you have to do it, has to navigate all the advances and whether you want to say, whether you want to say. Yeah. See? There we go. She listed it all. The okay. downsides of pretty privilege. Points were made. Yeah. A lot. Points there, were made. Yeah. So originally, like, I think there's a part where I go, that girl is a dream. She yeah. means everything. Probably said her dress is dropping off her yeah. shoulder. She, yeah, she means everything. And the original line was, she means everything to no one. Why did you take that out? Because they were like, it's too dark. Carlo, chill. Oh. And then they cut that line out. But she, but that's literally. And now it's a summer happy song, but it's yeah, on pain. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, but that's no, why it's it, on it makes so much sense. Yeah, she go, go and listen to it now with that it lens. It makes no, so much yeah, sense. Yeah, because then everybody's like, oh my god, everybody wants her attention. Everybody thinks she has it all, and like then you look at her and it's just like, oh no. And I think it happened. Okay, did you experience you know, this real time? I did, and oh god. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. I can say it. So I was at a party and Gigi Hadid was right there. Okay. And like you could tell, like if this was somebody that was a random girl in like a dive bar, I would have been like, oh honey, what's wrong? But no one around her could tell something was wrong because obviously she's sad, but she still looks gorgeous when she's sad, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh no, she's... And I think that's because usually when I have real life experiences, I like write things down. So I was very weird. But I wrote I wrote it down. I was like, she's the it girl, she can't control it. No, but and so she saw that in real life, you wrote it down. Yeah, I wrote yeah. it down. And then I was trying to like think of lyrics when they sent me the beat. And I was like, oh, it sounds like a fashion party. And that was the most recent fashion party I had just been to. And I was looking outside, I was looking at my view, and I was like, something like this is probably happening right now. It's probably fashion week or something. You know, fashion week just passed. And you see all these models, like, have you seen that? image of like the models at fashion week where the sling back shoes that yeah. they're walking yeah. on is like bruising their yes, feet yes 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 yeah but it's just like oh my god you're so lucky to be walking for you say laurent and like yada 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 but it's just like I, she wants to kill herself you know this 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 particularly reminds me of uh, i think one of my favorite dance songs of all time just because Which of one? the writing, and I wish you, I wish they let you leave that line in. Which one? It, it would have, oh. brought, <laughs> would have brought so much. Yeah, go on. Richness. Even because I think the even song. without the line, if you go and listen you to it, get that. you can still, you still get, get that. that vibe. You still get that. Yeah. That's why I opted to like leave it in Remi- the pain section. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It reminds me of Gypsy Woman, Crystal. Waters. Yeah, yeah. She's just like you and me. Exactly, but, but she- she's homeless. Like yeah, what? but it's hard. <laughs> What? But it's hard. Why? <laughs> but it's hard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, so ah man. And she's singing for money. That's that's that that's actually a very, very like important explanation. So like sing. Yeah, it is. So, it was, so it she is. inspired that particular song. Yeah, it was like I mean, because I, I have a lot of like model friends in New York City. And they too. share like experiences. And like you. I know the things that actually go on. Like a lot of them are really sad, you know, hmm. but they're gorgeous. <laughs> You were saying you, know? you have model friends, yeah? Well, go on. Go to your relationship. <laughs> Except go to just, your relationship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except like five minutes ago. Oh, I my see. girlfriend knows. She knows I have. She knows I have a thing for models. Mm. It's harmless. Don't oh, worry. Oh, so mm. so beautiful. Mm. She knows. She knows. La la dee, da dee. <laughs> <laughs> la la da dee. <laughs> Please, oh, oh. My God. please don't kill me. So, so for you as a person, mm-hmm. I, I I like the fact that when you're talking about these experiences, like at least I didn't even know that that's what you were referring to. Mm-hmm. But I love how very descriptive you were with the music. Yeah, and I think that listening to the body of work, pain and pleasure, even with the title, I can tell that you're someone who puts you like your experiences in your music. Oh yeah. How do you like mm-hmm. draw the line for you so that you are not oversharing? I think mm-hmm. now also mm-hmm. you also mentioned your therapy mm-hmm. and your therapy is telling you to put all your anger in your music. Yeah. Do you sometimes like restrain yourself from oversharing? 
Yes. Because <laughs> left to me, I will lay it all out. I will open my yash in the middle of the center. I tell everybody, yeah. like everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a toxic trait. I can't shut up. Um, <laughs> but um, obviously, you know, I have to, because the wonderful thing about music is that music lives on for like forever. Yeah. Like w- when I'm six feet under and all that, my music will still be playing, inshallah, yep. and all that. Yep. So it's just type of thing where I have to be careful the things I want to say. Yeah. You know, and I have to... So even that, that's why this album was very important because I was going through a lot and there are things that... And it was, a lot of it was like industry stuff wow. that I was going through. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was just type of thing where I wanted to really like kind of have it as a time capsule of what I was going through, but also like still be like a message where like, cause like funds eh, and I'm someone who I've worked in nine to five before I've worked like in America and I've worked here and I've had, and I know what it feels like when maybe you find out, Oh, the person next to you in the cubicle next to you doing the same amount of work that you are. And all that type of stuff is making way more money than you and how pissed that gets you. Hmm. And so I wanted funds, even though yes, they were finessing me for my money and all that. I wanted it to be like, relatable enough where if I'm pissed off and I'm going to ask my boss for a raise this would be like my hype song you know you have to mentally prepare yourself yeah. for the conversation like cause for me it used to be like Kanye songs where I'm like okay this person pissed me off and I have to confront them and it used to be like a Kanye song which, of which like Kanye pe- song people were doubting him look I have this touch this guy tatted on my hand wow I'm gonna right testify yeah. <laughs> That's my. I have one tattoo. Uh, like that. Kanye has like real life fans. Yeah, or like uh, wow. You know, this old Kanye. I would like to uh, clarify. I do oh, not. Better. I do not align with current Kanye. <laughs> this is September of 2023. Carlo Kanye does not head align in, in Venice on a with, boat. Yeah, Carlo does green. not align with anything. <laughs> Kanye has actually, as a matter of fact, all of 2023 Kanye. and two, and perhaps one. Exactly. Um, I do 2020. Not, uh, I, it's, and zero, uh, I do not align with. But old Kanye, late old registration Kanye, Kanye okay. my goat. Um, so I would listen to like Kanye to like hype myself up, especially when I needed to like confront someone, yeah. which that happened a lot when I was dealing with a lot of this industry stuff. I was like, okay. So I'm like, okay, I need to make like my versions of those, you know, where it can speak for me. Because it was something I listened to my songs to ginger myself. To yeah. Like, like <clears throat> yeah. gotta do this, you know? And then um, it can also be relatable to someone who's like, you know, working at their cubicle and stuff. Wait, as, yeah. as someone who's like a dance artist. Mm-hmm. But still you, fun and upbeat. Still fun. Yeah. <laughs> how did you feel the first time, your first Beyonce Renaissance play? I was like, mm. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want the beehive coming for me. <laughs> Next question. I mean, I, for me, I, I was like, um, Carlos should be here. You yeah. Know? And I think, it, I, did you get those kind of calls? Like, did you call you? Did, or yes. Did you I, I, I got like, a lot of DMs. About, like, I think I even made like a TikTok about it because Drake dropped that yes. album. And then yes. Renaissance came out either yes. the week after or two weeks no, after. I think Drake came after. Yeah. No, no, Drake, no, Drake came, came first, before. Before. Came first. The week before. before. Then, then Beyonce just like, was like, what's going on? That Kanye was working on a dance Yeah, yeah. So it was well. just kind of like my phone was going off because even my label was like, Carlos C. Carlos C. And I'm like, uh, it's your time, I've been making this for a minute. So yeah. what am I supposed to do now? Yeah, what I'm supposed to do. That's what the album sounds like. The fuck? Well, I can't change anything right now. We're doing paperwork, you know? <laughs> so it's just like, I mean, it was nice because then it like made, because I think even Shade Room did a whole thing of like, oh, people who have been killing it in dance music and I was on there. So that was nice. Yeah. You know, but it's just like. Got your props and all. Yeah. Dance music, even though it was founded by like black people and culturally like African-American people. But it's very, it's very much a white male dominated space right Mm. now. Yeah. Yeah. Where even if like, I mean, yeah, you can play some of the Beyonce and the Drake records right now because they put it in like this cool niche. But like, and if you're making Kylo it, I am not Beyonce Drake level. You're mm. still like kind of underground, mm. you know? Yeah. Are you little? 
Like that. I am so I'm so sorry. I'm so guys, sorry. we're I'm about so to sorry, go on guys. a break. Please remember that the full episode drops on Monday <laughs> on YouTube. I'm so sorry. And all streaming platforms. Catch it on Monday. See ya. <laughs> well, <no. laughs> I can't believe it. Um, I'm so sorry. I, I'm looking for. I don't know if if it, if it has happened. I don't think so because I think I would have caught it. But I'm very much looking forward to when um you get to collab or work with Ketranada. Is that, that well? Uh, has the name pronounced? Is Ketranada. Ketranada. Yeah, that would be nice. I yes. think so. Mm-hmm. I think so. Mm-hmm. I heard the project he did with Amine. Yeah. Ketra like, Ketramine. Ketramine, <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is. This Interesting. Yeah, interesting. I'm back again. I I still stand on this my small agenda. I really love to hear you rap. That you guys, the I mean, album. I, I, mean, I, yeah. I, rap, I do a little rap shit on the album. Yeah, but like on a on a text. on like real like rap rap. On a like a, on a on like beat. a hip, yeah on like a hip hop level, you know. Who knows? I mean, call me Odimodo or whoever. Yeah. Hit, hit me up. How I long? Then. How long? How long are you still around for? Are you still around for long? For oh, like a month? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, push. Yeah. We're, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's get in the stool. Oh, yeah, no. People. <laughs> you know, I, 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 see, so I heard, I've, I heard your music and I always felt like the fact that you deliver the way you deliver mm-hmm. makes you stand out. Mm-hmm. But I never pissed it back to ha- you having hip hop influences. So not, yeah, because like, even all that, I think, I tried to make a... I can even probably play for you. I tried to make a remake to um, Plenty Nonsense once. Oh, wow. Yeah. And like the... Because obviously it's all these like going bodijis. They don't know. So they like... Yeah. They were like, what are you listening to right now? I was like, honestly, I'm listening to my childhood shit. And um, the guy is... I played them two songs. I played um, Plenty Nonsense. And then I played Wasu for them. <laughs> so um, we made a cut. That was like a flip of plenty nonsense, and they sampled it in a sick way. Oh I might not end up using the song, but I think someone needs to use that beat because the beat is hard because it samples plenty nonsense in this like amazing modern way. Yeah. And then the other guys used like inspiration of the beat patterns of like um shroom. Baby me show. Okay. And that's what pain and pleasure is. Mad. The do you, do you, actual do you, track pain and pleasure. Do you pleasure. produce now? Do you produce? Nah. I mean, once in a while, if the spirits should uh, tap an MC, MPC, yeah. or whatever. What's what's it like? Like you're between more or less now. It's like you're between Lagos and New York. Mm-hmm. Two very strong cultural cities. Yes. Not like in music and in other things. You yes. Know. <laughs> but let's even go zone into like music alone. Mm-hmm. Um. What's it like? I feel like I, I'm, I'm jealous because I feel like you get to take influences from here and there. And yeah. You put mash, all that mash it all. into the music. What's the dance music scene like out there in New York? Oh, it's very, oof, it's crazy. Sticky floors. I think Black Coffee, even because he just did MSG, Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And then he did an after party at an, like, as a much bigger venue. Okay. I mean, not bigger, but like, is is very big it's like called brooklyn mirage which is like i think is a 10k or 5k it depends it depends on how much of it they open it can be 5 or 10k and that's where the after party was because that's how like the dance scene is very like yeah it's very intense i would say yeah do you do you do you like intense do you do intense that that's the i used to like intense in my early 20s I used to love intense, but now I'm just like I just want to go su- home. I just want to go home, guys. I just want to be my blanket. Yeah. Um, okay. 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 Mm-hmm. Hey. Um. By the way, apparently at the moment there's a lot of money flowing through your city right now, New uh, York. Through it. Who, uh, who is so putting the money there? I saw news today. The, the the United Nations General Assembly is happening. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And apparently, whenever that happens. Sharing money. They make it rain on the strippers. They oh! make it rain on the strippers. Wait, for real, for real? I'm um, for real. Is that clips? Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's a headline I read today. Global leaders slash diplomats splurging over $100,000 on strip clubs and 5K per prostitute. I saw that. I saw that headline. Ooh, today. So, 
you guys are you guys are you guys are going very very crazy right now in New York. Guys, welcome back from the break. If you missed anything that was said, please remember to check us out on Monday on all streaming platforms and on YouTube. And you can also catch reruns of this on Pop Central TV. Yes. Woo. So there's a lot of money. You're, you're, miss, you're missing out, but you're, you're not bad at life. Look, I miss out too. Ah, sometimes I wish I wasn't raised with morality. It will be so much easier for me. Were your, were your, were your parents like pastors or like no, strong Christians? No. Were you, the, no. were you like went back here when you were raised? Were you the, going to church every Sunday? No, I'm Muslim actually. Were you Muslim? Yeah, okay, man's is Muslim inshallah and that. Oh, mad. Yeah. In it. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea. I had no idea. I could never. Yeah, Lao Akbar. Oh, wow. What state are you from here in Nigeria? Lagos. Ah. Uh, Lagos, Omoiko. Lagos. Yes. All right. Yeah, Lagos Island. When you left the nine to five uh-huh. to do the music thing fully, how did your family take it? <laughs> African child. <laughs> you know. I feel like this Gen Z now, like there's a lot of music success stories, so it's easy for yeah. you to have a conversation with your parents. I like, think I referenced that actually in the Billboard article because it was just like then there were no like sustainable and it's kind of like what I said about how if you're a musician then like you're not getting back other royalties right now yeah i mean maybe you are in that maybe they just put your songs on spotify very recently and people are just discovering it and yeah, then yeah. you're making a few but like it wasn't sustainable and it was just like it was so ridiculous even now that i think about it like if i was a parent right now and my child said to me I mean, if I was a parent then and my child said to me i would have also probably reacted the same way they reacted Right, because it was just like that's it was so silly. It was, yeah, it but was. um, yeah, they didn't react so well. <laughs> <But>. <laughs> no, oh my God. what's yeah. what's happening? What's happening? Um, with the with the love relationship side. Oh, jeez. How's that side? How's that side going? It's going wonderfully. Are you are you in a relationship? Yes. Ah. Well, are you is it are you in a relationship with a Nigerian? Yes. Ah, interesting. I'm giving you one word answers. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um I am sure Mel- Melody had to step up, but I'm sure she would have a lot to say. Well, thank thank the Lord. <laughs> She's not here. Allah <laughs> um, the the life of an artist can be a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of pressure, a lot of schedules. How do you balance it out? How do you make time out for family? How do you make time out for your relationship? Mm, that's a very good question. Um, well, I will say, because, you know, obviously with my dad passing recently mm-hmm. and, you know, there's this strong desire to be there for my family a lot more. Yeah. Because a lot of my earlier career, I was like, I think at the peak, I was doing like 80 shows a year and they were all in like different countries. So it was very tough being present. So now I just, like, I'm more intentional, I want to say, yeah. with, like, communication and checking in and being there for, like, even, like, my nephews and my mom and siblings and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my. Just intention. Yeah. Intention is the big difference. You see the thing with... Um intention right so um this is always a conversation on twitter where women say oh this this came up recently i started seeing a lot of those tweets I think the algorithm, <laughs> the algorithm started serving it up i told back. you not interested yeah you click it <laughs> about how um shout out to um men that so there's, apparently there's this thing men do where oh when God. the relationship starts what do men do it's again all, it's all sweet and nice mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden he's very busy uh, and they're like shout, uh, shout out to men that are I've not gotten but, that yet but still make out time for you and stuff like that and I was like but niggas be busy though <laughs> yeah um, but there's there's intention you know yeah. because you I can mean, be but, mega busy if I have the intention to be there but life is just life in uh, that is not really intention is it oh my god you know because when I say intention I like maybe I'll give an example in that. Um, I would say earlier in my career, if they said, "Oh, you, you have to do this," and it coincided with maybe like 
a thing my family had been planning or like I'll be like ah I'm still in that rice and grind you know blah blah energy so I would like be like oh no I have to do this other thing but now I prioritize the family event over like what yeah. I have to do now interesting you know and that's intention because it's just like ah, 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 I've blocked this thing out in my calendar it is a family today thing is for family today is yeah for- so do not book anything on these days and then I make the time to be there and that my dear is intention wow that's my dear okay. mm-hmm. what was it like collaborating with Idris Elba oh, it was great it was very wonderful did you guys meet physically yeah, uh, not for the song but we've met physically oh, since okay. the song yeah yeah yeah. it was very interesting <laughs> how did that happen what's the story there it, a random person DM'd me, like, and I thought it was a scam because I was just like, uh, why would you dress Elba? Because I didn't even know he was making music at the time. This was, I think, pre Boasty. Yeah. Idris Elba? So I was like, uh, what do you mean that this is not true? And then lo and behold, they sent me the track, that's his voice. And also, this is pre AI. <laughs> so Could I was like, been, yeah, I was like, oh, it's definitely Idris Elba. And it there's an empty have- verse here. So I did it and then I got in touch with him officially and all that. And yeah, he's great. He's a very wonderful guy. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. You know, another thing that um, you've done, you're probably one of the young Nigerians out there that who has music that has gotten like a lot of sync placements. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Not this. <laughs> you know, sync, sync has come through for you. Yes. And you have come through for sync. Yes. Um, what's that like? Because I feel like so. First of all, here mm-hmm. at home, mm-hmm. we are entering that phase where people are becoming more conscious of saying yeah. licensing, yeah. publishing deals. Like in the last two to three years, no, especially in the last two years, uh-huh. the amount of I need a publishing deal. Publish that. Like, ah, uh, nice. It's been ringing up and down. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and we people weren't that conscious mm-hmm. about it. Um, mm-hmm. What's your experience being like with Sync and the process? Um, how tedious is it? How crazy it is, is it, rather? Well, mine is definitely, and I don't know if it's also again the way I phrase things or whatever. But I was getting Sync even long before I got a publishing deal. I didn't even know you had to. Honestly, I didn't even know my case was unique to me because I thought every professional musician got sync when did you find out that you are, your case is different and um, when i signed to epic and then my anr was like oh maybe we might be able to see if we can possibly get a sync i'm like yeah i get syncs all the time and he's like what why didn't you say this and i'm like does everyone not get sync, sync all the time no nah, they don't bro <laughs> yeah i didn't i was not aware of this and then I literally now had to now compile a document documenting all the sync I had gotten. And it was so much sync, we couldn't even fit it into one page. And I was oh, like, wow. oh, okay. Oh, wow. This is an issue. <laughs> I mean, no, it's, it's not a bad issue. It's a good thing. It's a good you're issue. Like, you're like, but then it, it dawned on you how... You yeah, because then that's when they told me, yeah, people like can go through a whole career and it'd not rough, get this sync. rough out here, trust me. Yeah, bro. but I get like... I'd, I probably can't. You're on move. FIFA? You've been on FIFA? Yeah, this is. I got FIFA this year, and this is my fourth FIFA placement. Mad. This one. Mad. Yeah. Like so. some people even get that once, and it's a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I think I have three video games this year. Oh, mad. So that's nice. Mad, mad, yeah. mad. Um, Opus, let's see some of this money, please. <laughs> shout out to shout out to Opus behind the scenes, behind the camera. Shout out Opus. Shout, shout out, out Opus Op- Republic. When did you, when did you guys start working? Uh this year. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. I just recently found out that Opus has a whole wife and all. Yeah, you did a whole wife. Yeah, like we were at the launch. You like, like half. Lab- <laughs> we're like a label event and uh, Opus just does it casually, like, oh, me and my wife are, what? Bro, oh, what? Like, bro, oh. step back. <laughs> step what? step R- back. Flip it in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that sounds like a, a Nigerian man thing. Like, 
Yeah. Yeah, but it's true now. It's always so casual. Like you do do. Julian, oh, that's my wife. Hi. Okay. Cool. But it's true. But it's true. And Julian, I'm like, oh yeah, that's my wife. I feel my wife. Oh cool. Handshake. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to wow, you know, ten years ago when I met my wife. It's not supposed to be a rollout. It's not supposed to be a rollout. It should be a rollout. Yeah. The day I met her. She threw me off my feet. Um, yeah, she, she saved changed my, my life. You know, you know those, you know those um, American, those maybe like African American uh-huh, declarations stories. of love. When, declarations of love. Yeah. When, man said, when I met her, my life changed. Yeah. She swept me off my feet. I, I mean, I m- felt like I could fight the dogs. I felt like I could take over the world. M- maybe, but here, maybe just it might here. be a little too much for a casual introduction. Yeah, maybe, but, but yeah. You but it would, nice. I mean, it would be nice. It would be nice. It would be nice once in a while. I mean, but <laughs> that's the anyway. I used to always like question. So when people do this thing you just described, now, I said, "Nigga, you're capping. Your the story is too much. Like it's too relax. long." But but I, I I now accept that it's true. There are people who have like those magical moments. You know yeah. how they met their partner. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, that I, moment my, is my, nice. My current girlfriend. I was at an event and she was fe- like walking in. She was the first person I saw. And did, did and the I whole room shut down? And I couldn't remove my eyes. You couldn't take her. your eyes off of her. You and, saw her from across the room. And I was speaking like. <laughs> Run across the room. And at that moment, I knew you were the one. Oh, my oh God. I love it. And then, you know, I watched, I watched a, a rom com today. I was yeah, cool. I, oh, I love rom com. Which one? Love, love at first sight. Yes, I think it's Wait, I, I which one is that? Who's in that? It's, uh, who's it's, it? It's like a B list. It's like, it's, it's full of like upcoming guys. I think only the, the lady. Hey, is her name Halu? Or I can't remember, I can't remember her name. Love but at first it, sight. It's, it's on Netflix. I'm oh, I'm gonna find. I love rom coms. It's, it's based on a book. The the it's based on a novel. And the novel is called the statistical probability. The statistical probability of falling in love at first sight. That's oh. Okay. That's the name of the book of the novel. Okay. Yeah. They, they just reduce it to love at first sight. But mm. the movie is amazing. It's oh, about, it is. About, Look at him talking about rom coms. Like, I don't That's really, so I don't nice. Watch Look at you, you com-coms. whipped. I don't really. <laughs> you okay. whipped. I don't even watch. He said, <laughs> I'm sprung. And you get me. I like you, gentlemen. We have come to the end of the movie. I'm you. I'm sprung. I'm sprung. And you get me. You know what makes this worse? You know what makes this worse? I love that song. I love it so much. Carlo, you're the best. <laughs> but the movie is amazing about like this girl that misses her flight and now she has to book another flight and she has to pay business class and she calls her dad. Her dad Wait, don't spoil it because I'm going to watch that. But it's amazing. She misses uh-huh. a guy on the plane. She misses a guy I'm going to watch it. Can you not do it? They, Can you please not? I'm going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to watch that. Yeah. It's, a great cha- it's a great movie. It's a great movie. I'll Wonderful. Watch it. I'll watch it. Guess what? We need Guess to watch it. So I tweet about the movie that I watched it by accident. It's great. It's crazy. Guess who else has watched the movie? Dolani. I saw his tweet. I said, like, hey. I'm like, are we getting old? Man, we're supposed to be harder. Hard I saw. We're supposed to be in the club. We're supposed to be Smoking like, on that shisha. <laughs> Gangsta. Nah. <laughs> Smoking yeah. shisha in the corner in the back you know, of the club. So, so it's like, so it's like, I, I don't know. So when, when you know, Excel and Tony be saying stuff like, we're supposed to be hardcore. The, the first person that viewed hardcore for me, that I always had this mental image of him being hardcore, it's Jay Z, oh. and these days he just not even these days for a long time. He's just crazy about his wife. Corny, corny as I'm, shit. He, he did cheat on his wife, so he got. Hey, hey! First of all, uh, he, he there is no that. proof yeah. that my man holds. There's a whole album about it. Yeah. Hey, you could have it's called yeah, Lemonade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a marketing thing. Hello, <laughs> marketing. You know it's possible. Yeah, Hello, it is possible. I promise Hello. you that. No, that, he did. Do like an interview with like Letterman or something. Yeah, where he spoke about going to therapy. Yeah, he could still be he a did that. He thing. did that shit. Could be a Hello, but, but I'd, I'd but rather yeah. I'd rather I would stay on the path of life yeah. that says that it was a marketing plan. You think so? That's the way I want to be. Fair enough. They, they calculated. That's the way I want to be. No, she's I, saying that just for her own sanity. For my sanity. She's, yeah. a, she's too much. For you, okay. She's too much a Beyonce you fan to be accept that anybody cheated on the queen. The Lulu the is the solution. The Lulu. The Lulu is the solution. That's where yeah. I want to be. That's where I want to be. So the I, Lulu I think it's a market is the solution for you. be this. He's <laughs> happily the Lulu. I can't oh believe God. you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Jay Z is crazy about 
Beyonce. It's just like, yeah. yeah. Nigga, please. Uh-huh. I was like greatest rapper of all time. Go. Chill. So Chill. Mean, but, but I remember watching a Charlemagne interview and Charlemagne was like, I don't know any man. Yeah. Doing well career wise. Yeah. That now ruined his relationship or marriage. Mm-hmm. He had a good woman, ruined it over like cheating. And years later, it's still okay. Okay, didn't Lani share that with Mentally me? Mentally or emotionally, like yeah, yeah, I've seen okay, it. Like, I've seen it. You know, because yeah, I've seen it. So it's mm. like cheating is like I know how much we talk about. Like, so he was talking about the culture of like how much people make it. Like, oh, you have money now, go do whatever you like. You mm-hmm. know, <laughs> it's like nah, like especially when you're grown and you have your family. Yeah, like, don't throw away that for just like ten minutes or fifteen minutes or yeah. One I saw hour. that video. And then, um, I saw that video of pleasure. And it's just 15 minutes though it's not like 2 minutes is that your, is that your experience is that your experience I'm, uh, hey, man. let's not do that like, it's 15 you, minutes my nigga <laughs> okay cool do whatever the Lulu is it's a Lulu is this a Lulu <laughs> for you <laughs> do Hello. you my nigga for you <laughs> do you write do you for do you write jingles yeah. <laughs> you know, start writing jingles I mean we've established this same yeah. baby yeah I mean yeah. like for you brands are like you do like special brand oh yeah jingles. brands hit me up which you camera know. do I look into brands hello Nigerian brands call Opus Republic let if them you, set it up yeah call, hit, hit them up oh hey too <laughs> 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 who's your favorite artist of all time yeah old Kanye what the Old Kanye. You know the funny thing about this? He said, wow. You know the funny thing about Who were you expecting her to mention? Who? Who? (laughs) Why not? That's her manager, by the way. He said he didn't expect her to mention. It's old Kanye. Old Kanye. I'm always very surprised. Okay, let me know. I love the old Kanye. The pink polo Kanye. Yeah, because honestly, if like, and it sounds like an an exaggeration, because in my therapist, she was like, write down the things that make you you. And I'm like, if Kanye. someone don't like old Kanye, um, you can't white. like me. Deserve is white. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but she changed my life, though. She changed my life, though. For real, for real. Shout out to Kanye's therapist. But, but you, know, you know the funny thing is that I, oh, I see a lot of, you know, TikTok videos, because I watch a lot of all of these damn therapy videos, mm-hmm. where a lot of black women complain about having white therapy, that they don't get their reality. How do yeah, because you- then they give you like, they were like, you need to stand up to your parents and tell them that you have boundaries. It's like, <laughs> what, what do you mean? In my house? Africa house. You want me to tell them what's going to happen to me in slap. that situation? Yeah. They're like, you are whatever age you are. I will not reveal my age under, under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are an adult. You need to set your boundaries. You can't have your family coming to stay She's where you are. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean, Sharon? <laughs> what do you mean? What do you, you want me to tell them? You want no, you write what I'm supposed to say because I can't. I can't say it. So, yeah. so in reference to that, I'm going to come mm-hmm. back to like your therapist and changing your life. I saw mm-hmm. a tweet that was trending on social media. Everyone was talking about what is the hardest thing about living with your African parents. <laughs> and somebody said something. Somebody said, the lack of privacy to feel sadness. Yeah. Because like, why I, are you burning your face? No, why are you sad in their house? <laughs> <laughs> why are you burning your face? I, know, I have <laughs> held on to that tweet like this all week. Because it's like, did do, someone said that you'll be so sad to see us to make semo. It's like, <laughs> what are you doing? And you are now making it your obsessed. What do you mean? Let me, let me say something. wake you up for 5 a.m. prayers. It's... Good morning. Come on, sing now. <laughs> oh, on, on Sunday morning, like, uh-uh. why you don't get to church? <laughs> it's like, I don't want to go. Why? So I don't be sad in peace. You can't just be, you can't put this. I don't be sad in peace. I promise you that it is so annoying because I don't, I can't relate to the part where they say that, you know, you are so sad, but your Nigerian parents will ask you to make semo because that's not my reality. Yeah, yeah. Jonas are like, oh nobody's asking you to do either. shit. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to do nothing. Well, because you are sad, made the house no shop. <laughs> my business, bro. Like, Shane, I'm, I'm, just, you. I'm just saying that. <laughs> typically, that's not my reality, like cooking and shit, like in the house and stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But the, the lack of privacy to feel sadness. Yeah, lack of privacy, period. Especially when you're sad. It's, it feels like they are trying to help you yeah. process your sadness. It's like, and as a person, I don't like to be yeah. spoken to. You want to be like left alone. Leave me in. in that's what my mom like in the morning. She's like, ah, 
you want me to make you breakfast? And I'm like, no. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> but I feel like the flip side really? of the, 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 really? the flip side of this is, is there is a family meeting. Is it texting someone to say, ah, your your sister has not come out of her room all day. Oh. <laughs> Do you want to ask her? And that thing it gets me. So then my, my brother now calls stylishly, like, ah uh-uh. ah, how are you now? Like, oh, I'm cool. Like. Yeah, you're not supposed to complain because this is the good side. What you're telling me is even a very balanced yeah, family. Yeah, because at least they check on you. It's a very you. balanced, nice family. They told your brother to call and your brother is calling. Bro, it's... Come out from that world. No, don't do it. Don't tell to come out from no, that room. Most people. No, no, no. But it's just like... You, not, you, you have it good. It's you what I'm saying. You have it really, really good. You have it good. It's you have like, it really good. It's always like family missing for your sadness. It's like... <laughs> Do you uh, want to do? Uh, uh, let's talk about it. Do they call your sister? I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. And also because a lot of times, my mom. You know they say it's because you are not praying. Uh, no, I'm not. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah man. Let me let me say let me say the funny thing that happened. So last, because I was, I was talking to my mom about like I had a meeting at work and I was telling my mom about how, oh god, I'm just feel like, uh, uh, okay, cool. And I was like, ah, this happened in my meeting. I'm just having like a very tired day. Like, oh, I was having a very stressful day at work. I just my mom casually, like, oh, like, ah, did you pay your tithe this month? <laughs> oh, yes. The devil, have, the devil has robbed you of your joy. She's like, did you pay? I'm like, mommy. She said, no, you have to. This are the things. <laughs> and then how many, how long was that lecture? It was like, then it was so bad. That, like, I had to, like, end the conversation. She now sent me, Jeremiah. Read this place, Jeremiah. 3. And I'm like, this one, I don't want to say nothing. But Nigerian parent, I also get the part of this coming from a place of love. But sometimes I just want to be left alone. Yeah, it be like that sometimes. Uh. Mm. I feel I feel like the flip side of that is that it's one of the reasons why Africans Africans are tough. These small things, it's, what, it's why Africans are tough and Africans go to like Western countries and they be doing the most under the worst conditions as immigrants or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and be excelling, yeah, and I they get you. excel and they come they, because yeah. they've been yeah. they've been trained to be fucking warriors. Uh. On that, <laughs> like, like, and you're a warrior whether you like it or not. It's, it's not an option. It's like, oh, what else? your boyfriend broke up with you. Cool. What else? Come, come sweep the house. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you mean you want to be yeah, in bed? So, uh, you want to be in bed? That's a luxury farm. Yeah. What, 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 what are we doing? What? what are we doing here? What are you doing? This is not, this is not what how. What do you mean? I actually saw someone that tweeted that and said that she was grieving. Like, okay, she, she she broke up with her boy. Her boyfriend broke up with her or something. And the morning of the day that they broke up, her mom, so they, they had to do like morning devotion. And during the devotion, she was crying so badly. And when I thought that it was Holy Spirit that was, you know, ministering to her, she like, Girl, I'm just crying for my sadness here. Like, it has nothing to do with you. But Carlo, when you say like your therapist changed your life, what do you mean? Well, she did because, first of all, I used to be crazy. Um, I used to be really crazy. <laughs> but I've calmed down, I've changed. Yes. And I mean, shout out her, because if not the album, because I was very, very angry and I didn't know how to express it creatively because a lot of my music prior to that was very positive. Mm. And I really only know how to write. I, I mean, prior to. I really only knew how to write about positive experiences. Yeah. I didn't know how to write about negative things. And if I knew how to write about negative things, it was like more ballady. Oh, like, adele Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I don't, anybody want to do all that stuff on stage? <laughs> like, it's nice. I can write. I'm very good at writing it. But okay. performing it... It's not your vibe. <laughs> you know, you're just standing there and then you have to... I like close my eyes when I sing those type of songs and it's just like not fun. And I was like, I need to find a way to do violence, but make it fun. Yeah. And make it upbeat and everything. But violence. Yeah, it must be there. I want to... But, but fun. Yeah. So, yeah. So she, she helped, shout out she helped to navigate that. Yeah. yeah. And then also I bought a book. I bought a book about how to write a song. Yeah. So that helped too. Yeah. And look at you smiling. It's so great. <laughs> Shout Put out all shout my anger and my rage into be- five tracks. Actually, more than five because, you know, yeah, yeah, we record yeah, a bunch yeah. and then yeah. we pick. Yeah. Big shout out to Sharon. Shout for, out Sharon. For, her name yeah. is not really Sharon, is it? Her, her name is Sharon. <laughs> um, <laughs> although she's not my therapist anymore right now Why? because Sharon ended up needing therapy herself. I was like, I think, Sharon, you need a therapist. 
The, um, the therapist needed therapy. She needed God therapy. Damn. Because she'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. My boyfriend did it. I'm like, it's not like you should be telling your therapist this. Not on my time. <laughs> you expensive. You know? You oh, talk wow. to your therapist. She's like, sorry, you Carlo, know? I'm running late. I'm having a bad day with my boyfriend. Like, don't yeah, tell me that. Don't, don't tell me that. Don't tell, tell me that. Tell your therapist. Tell yeah. your therapist. You know? Yeah. It's like, it's like maybe like going to meet a pastor, for example, or doing confession. Yeah, and the pastor tell you his problems. You're supposed to be the rock. My dog. Nah, you're dog. You're supposed to have all the answers. Nah, you don't know what you're doing. I'm down for that. Like, that's yeah, the, but, you but, go. That's not what we're doing. You need a pastor. But do, you know, do, you know, do you know how very wild and how very, you know, like how very wild that is? You having like seen your therapist as your rock and your, th- your therapist wants to talk to you about something and single to your therapist. And I feel like it's a general thing because people always feel like the friend that people can talk to about things, they don't know that person's The strong friend. The strong friend. Do you be yeah, needing? Yeah, the strong friend. I'm the strong, the, I'm the strong friend. The strong friend, friend the strong really, friend. really yeah. we do be needing the other strong friend. Yeah. The strong, strong friend, friend got a therapist. The strong friend is strong because they have another strong friend. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's mm-hmm. nice. All right. Carlo, thank you so much for coming. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You ended me. up staying longer than you thought you would. I did. Wow, Carlo stayed till 11. Yeah, did you, did I you stayed till 11. I'm about to mad dash out of here. Did you have what? a good time? Did you have a good I time? I did, I did. It was, it was nice having you. You see, that's right. I talk too much. I can't stop. But, but it's great. I love yeah. it. I love it. You're, it's unfortunate. You're fun to talk to. You're fun yeah. to talk to. Thank you. Guys, please. I know, I'm fun to talk to. Go talk check to out Pain. With my hair. Pain. <laughs> pain. Is it pain and pleasure or pain all? You know, I don't know. Pain, pleasure. It's like pain. Pain slash pleasure. Pain slash pleasure. Pain slash pleasure. Shout out, check it out. <laughs> it's out now on all streaming platforms on all DSPs by Carlo. That's K A. I wish I had a physical copy. Hyphen L O. Amazing, amazing body of work. Tell him it's Carlo. Did Carlo. Did it's not Carlo. Him? It's not Kalo. It's not Carlos. It's not Carlos. <laughs> but Carlos is worse. That's, yeah. that's, that's unforgivable. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Carlo. All right, check it out. And remember, we remain Zero Conditions Podcast. You can send us an email, zeroconditionspod at gmail.com. And you can check us out on social media, Zero Conditions underscore. Until next week, keep killing it out there. You know, be you. Have fun. We love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Boom. Wonderful. Oh.